Hey guys, it's Priya and Kaya. Welcome to another episode of our podcast, Easier Read Than Done, where we review books and talk about environmental issues highlighted in said books. The book we have chosen for today is relevant to our current situation. All of us are guilty of relying on fossil fuels to get our work done and our daily lives running. But fossil fuels are scarce resources and with the global demand increasing, scientists predict them running out in the near future. Keeping that in mind, this book speculates about what society would look like if fossil fuels run out. A lot of books are set in a dystopian era in the far future where the earth has drastically changed. But just like A Friend of the Earth by T.C. Boyle, a book we covered previously, this book, A World Made by Hand by James Howard Kanzler, is set in the 2020s. We chose this book in the hopes that reading about the predictions of the present might jar us all in taking some action. But before we get started, here is a short summary so that all of you can follow. World Made by Hand by James Howard Kanzler is a dystopian novel which is set in the fictional town of Union Grove, New York. After the world after the oil crisis is one that is stripped of all of its modern comforts and is ravaged by terrorism, epidemics, and it has the economic upheaval of peak oil demand crashing, all of which are exacerbated by global warming. It is narrated by Robert Earl, a, a local carpenter who has lost his wife and son. The novel focuses on four separate cultures that represent the direction society could go in after a breakdown of modern social norms. There, there is also a faction led by Stephen Bullock, a, well, a wealthy farmer with, with vision who has set his farm up like an English manor and strives to become self-sufficient. The fourth and final faction develops throughout the book when Brother Job comes into town. Um, who is the leader of New Faith Church, a religious group that has fled the South and settled into the old high school. But that's all we're going to say as we don't want to give out any more spoilers. So Kea, what was your favorite part of the book? I think it's definitely the plausibility of the situation and the scenarios that are outlined. The various communities really show that our world, world could go any of these ways uh, that we talked of if we fail to be cautious and take action to prevent this. Yeah, I know what you mean by it being plausible. It's one of the better dystopian fictions I've read with no unnecessary things like zombies and unexplainable magic. Yeah, and even though we did not know every aspect of each character, you could really empathize with them as all they wanted was food, shelter, and safety for their loved ones, even though all of these things have become difficult to find. That really made the character seem very real. I think that if you enjoy this book, you should even check out other ones by James Howard Kanzler, all of which are social commentaries in the form of a novel, just like this one. Yeah, in this book, you can see the different social behaviors and reactions changing and evolving, but also staying the same in some ways, uh, such as when people's attitudes are based off of their social and political rankings. I think the quote that best reflects the story and its main message is, it was chilling to reflect on how well the world used to work and how much we'd lost. It really makes you think about the scenario in the book and what we can do to prevent it in real life. With that said, we've come to the environmental issue that is talked of in the book, the global oil crisis and the climate change that fossil fuels cause. We've already talked about carbon emis emissions and global warming in a previous episode, which would be linked below. We spoke of how you can help reverse or at least slow down cli climate change at an individual level. However, today we're going to talk about what governments and global leaders can do to implement the same steps and help prevent global warming. The first one would be to mass reduce carbon emissions. One way to do this would be to make laws regulating carbon emissions from industries, industries so that they are at acceptable levels and to have severe repercussions for failing to do so. Another way uh, to do this would be to have a safe, clean and accessible um, and affordable system of public transport. This would make public transport as opposed to personal vehicles a more attractive option and it may reduce carbon emissions from vehicles in the long run. 
In addition to this, governments can promote green energy. They could also start building facilities to harness solar, wind, and hydro energy. Though the initial cost of setting all of these up would be high, it would be a step in the right direction because it would re reduce our dependence on fossil fuels to generate electricity. Yes, definitely. Moreover, a lot of research is being done into these new renewable resources, and this process of harnessing energy will become much more efficient and cheaper in the coming years. That's quite exciting, to be honest. Maybe the future isn't so bleak after all. Okay, so um, another thing governments can do is to reverse the damage that has already been done. Tree planting campaigns and the restoration of ecosystems would be a good start. It is our responsibility to ensure that our leaders are taking a step in the right direction. We have linked articles that describe many ways in which governments can help. However, it is your duty to ensure that they fulfill the same. We have also linked petitions urging world leaders at a global scale to do something about climate change. However, it is equally important for you to research about petitions or organizations in the place you live that are urging governments to take action and contribute to the cause. Yes, this is absolutely necessary and urgent. I'm sure almost every place would have some sort of organization advocating for this, so it shouldn't be hard to find one. Anyway, that's all we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and will take some action after listening. We have linked the articles and petitions in the description along with our previous podcast episode and blog post highlighting what you can do at an individual level to help the cause. So make sure to check that out. Thank you for listening and stay safe. We will be back with another episode in two weeks time where we will review Fire Flight by John J. Nance. So stay tuned.